Hello, my beautiful friend, and thank you so much for tuning in to this episode of Angels Don't Lie. I'm your host, Jeannie Street. I'm so thankful and grateful that you're here. And if you haven't already subscribed to this podcast, please take a minute to subscribe so that you get notified when the newest episodes are released. Today, the angels and I have a really special treat for you. We are speaking to Melissa Seaman. Her beautiful gifts allow her to tap in to your energy and help you to work with your gifts instead of against them. Her work in this world is really incredible. She does a lot of traveling. We got into a really intimate conversation and I can't wait for you to hear more from Melissa and how you can really start to trust your own intuitive gifts. I'll see you on the other side. I'm so happy to have you, Melissa. So happy to be here, Jean. Thanks for inviting me. Yeah, I think we have some mutual friends. I think that's um, how I came across your work. And I was like so intrigued about this girl who's in the field of like, law and being in the logic mind, but is so intuitive and so leading from that place. And I was like, Ooh, I want to chat with her. (laughs) It is a really fun story, honestly, as to how that shifting has happened and how I balance the worlds. Great. So let's just dive in. Tell me, tell me a little bit about yourself, like your background, and then, you know, right here, who you are now. Okay. So here's what my soul chose to play with this lifetime. So I, (laughs) so I was, I was a Stanford graduate. I went to law school. My dad was a judge. So I was like growing up in the courtroom. I even have my cute little scales behind me today. See my cute little scales. I (laughs) I felt like putting them out. Um, And so I really, I grew up in that analytical, clear, pragmatic way. At the same time, I was always an intuitive, creative kid. I was always a really faith-filled Catholic. I was like, you know, helping run retreats from when I was a teenager and I was the campus minister of my Catholic high school. And I was just really like in love with God and love with um, God in the way that it presented, which is inside the Catholic framework. And, um, you know, by the time I was whatever, 29 or whatever, I... I was married to a great guy who's also a Catholic and an engineer and a singer. So he had that creative event thing too. And everything was going great. I had my first baby Colin, my son, and we had this beautiful big house near the beach in San Diego. And I kind of was like, check, check, check. Like I had everything I wanted, you know? And then I went into labor with my second child, Clarice. And labor felt different. Like it felt like this grungy belly dance. It felt really good. It didn't feel like pain. And I just felt myself open as if Clarice was like sliding down a pole, as if she was spiraling down a pole in the center of my field, you know, and everything whoosh really open. It was this very ecstatic experience the likes of which I didn't really think was possible I thought it was just a myth that like hippie yoga girl said about how birth could be and then it happened to me and then afterwards I could see spirit guides and I could see layers of energy and I could see a lot you know including the dearly departed and the not so dearly departed I could see a lot of spirit that I couldn't I didn't even know was real before and so here I am this Catholic girl (laughs) suddenly seeing all this stuff that's really not supposed to exist and and it really felt like inside myself it felt like oh right like oh that may oh that makes sense okay but in the framework of my world no bueno didn't fit really concerned everybody um my husband my parents my friends were like oh this doesn't sound good You know, um, my mom at one point thought maybe I needed an exorcism. My My dad was a little more pragmatic about it. Well, but she's healing our friends. (laughs) She's doing really good things. How could that be evil? Mm. 
but it was so far outside of my box, you know, it was so far outside of my box. And many people think of, of spiritual awakening must be this like delightful, you know, transcendent, you know, thing that, that makes life completely easy from there forward. <laughs> and I'm here to tell you that's not always how it shows up. Like any other initiation, it was really hard at first. It was really a struggle. And I, like many of us, when we have our first big pop open, I can see you're dead and I can see your, and I can see what happened to you when you were four and like got an attitude and defense, right. To all of this uh, discomfort and struggle in my, in my family culture. And, um, so I got a little spiritually arrogant for a minute and, uh, or a couple of years as the case may be, I did a lot of great work. I, I channeled a lot of classes. I found myself just straight channeling a lot of things that I could share with other people that they found valuable. And, you know, but, um, as you can imagine, it took me into a whole nother realm that was a little bit disconnected from life. And that is the struggle, as you know, of us spirit folk, like it's, it's tricky to be in both worlds fully. Yes. I love everything you're saying. Like I connect so much with it. Um, really? Well, yes, because I came into this world being able to see, um, departed loved ones and not uh -huh. so good ones. Right. Right. And then also growing up Catholic, which is you're not supposed to do that. Right. And so I entangled, there was something wrong with me as a child. Like I, there's something seriously wrong that I'm doing this. I'm not supposed to be doing this. How dare I do this? But then, you know, stepping into like that adult version of me. And I was like yeah. the same thing. Like it was like, it was, it was broke back open. And it was like, you have to do this. And, and I yeah. couldn't not do it. But I love that you said like we will go through a uh, like a time where we um, may be a little bit more ego. Mm -hmm, uh, totally. <laughs> like you have to, you have to, to see it. To, oh, yeah. To be like, wow, girl, you might want to like, you know, go take a shower. <laughs> Get the showers, off. kid. <laughs> take yourself a little less stage, seriously. Stage in there. But, yeah. Um, I feel like it's really important and I think this is a good reminder that we get an opportunity to keep like kind of cleansing ourselves and healing mm -hmm. ourselves it, as we further develop our yeah. our gifts and where God leads us it's going to be completely different so I love that you have been led you know in your genre into in where it makes sense and people are like wait can you tell me more so what does it what does it look like now nowadays for you here and how old is your daughter first off oh she's 22 she's amazing yeah. i just watched her perform she's like this indigo artist you know she's just <laughs> she's yeah um and where has it led me like i after really diving into what i would have termed woo, -woo world you know and living an intentional community with a bunch of healers and uh, hot springs for seven years. I, I eventually really part of me started longing for having more impact in this world, in the world of business and in, in the world that I had been practicing as a business lawyer. I thought, you know, it's cool that I'm supporting other spiritual people to become more spiritual. And, and I still do that. I still except now it's a lot of times I'm training executives and business people how to leverage spirit gifts in their business. But now that's what I'm doing. I'm, I'm, I'm working with spiritual business people, people who are channels in their own right to strategize the right words and the right structures and the right um, magnetics and messaging and money strategies so that they can relax with this recurring revenue i want to go and, further with you on that like yeah um because they're showing me like it's not just the right words it's their soul words it's the ones that match right. their soul and that's what makes yeah. connection correct yes that's and the really soul true. of their business really yeah so the soul of their business so i've learned that yes it's about my soul what my soul came here to bring you know and of course you and i both know because we're walking in the soul realms all the time 
like we're here to do a thing. Usually we, we came here to do a thing. Yep. The soul came here to do a thing as this personality and to collaborate with the personality. So it's not just a one way show. Like the soul just drives you like a, you know, like a guy riding a horse, but rather it's this collaboration. And so that's, yeah, you're right. Of course you're right. You're a seer. You can see that what I do is I can see deeply into people and see what their soul's job is here and then work with their personality to determine, okay, how is the personality going to be willing to do this? Who are the people that the personality wants to work with? How can the soul's purpose be fulfilled fully, which is what, of course, lights up the personality as well, in such a way that the personality is going to make a lot of money and have a lot of fun and connect with the right people. So it's that it's that intersection. And then I've also been realizing the business itself develops its own soul base. It has its own counsels. It has its own reason for being. It has its own life path. Sometimes the soul of the business says, oh, I'm your business for a while, and then you're going to sell me. And I move into the stewardship of other humans. You know, So it's fun to work from the soul level all the way into the most pragmatic levels. I love talking with you about this because it, it's really unique work. Mm -hmm. And um, I call this, you know, in my, in my way of how I work with people, I call it a soul mapping. It's very similar mm -hmm. to like astrology, yep. but there's this, you know, energy around the soul that really helps to enliven the parts of them that maybe have um, been hidden or yes off yes those yes so yes you're, you're a true healer I really think this is phenomenal and oh thank you really changes our world by helping people to get back in tune with who they are as a soul instead of us wandering around like that kind of like <laughs> zombie experience yeah thinking, oh I gotta fit in or it needs to be done yeah like <sighs> Yeah. And that is unfortunately common, maybe even usual yeah. for us to sort of, we, we do what we're told and we do what we're trained and we do what's expected. And at some point our soul's map, our soul's purpose lights up inside of us. And we just say, oh, okay, like, it's time. oh man, I can't not do what I'm here to do now. And that's usually when people find me and, you know, I often do like this VIP session with them where I do just what you see, which is look into them, see what their soul's map is, what their real plan is, why they really are here now, what the timing has been. Because a lot of people, as soon as they get there, they're like, oh, am I too late? And it's usually like, no, your guides are like, no, now's the moment. This is the next chapter. And I work with a lot of women in mid years and middle years because we're finally old enough to sort of know better we give fewer Fs and we're ready to step up into our deepest purpose. And I find that is such a place of power, such a time of power in our lives, even at the same time as we're complaining about menopausal stuff and empty nesting and all the things that go with it. But it's also like that brilliance of like coming into your own of like, you get to decide now you don't have, to, yeah. you know, take care of, or, you know, Yes, the caretaking. You're, you're caretaking. You're 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 planning for your future. You're doing all the things, and then right. you know, if you have a family, you're you're planning for your children. And then you know you get to a point, and you're like, wait, where where am I? Where am right. I? Where did I go? Totally, mm. totally. You nailed it. Yeah. So tell me about like your work and like what I know. You probably switch it up a lot too, just because as a creative, you can't stay the same. <laughs> I can see that around you. Like, I'm kind of like that too. It's like, yeah. And my team is like, really, Jeannie? And I'm like, no, seriously, we have to find. Um, tell me what it's like for you right now, like here. Well, you know, I've managed to create um, an academy. I call it my Channel Your Genius Academy. And there's, yeah, there's about 75 women in there right now, mostly wise women in their middle years. And half of it is the mystery school where we really, walk through the easy, simple practices to keep moving forward in our own spiritual connection with our guides and in your own unique way. And then the other half is the business school because these wise women tend to be business owners or women who at least have a hobby business where they're really following their soul's 
map or path or, you know, purpose in a way that puts them in service to other people and in sacred exchange. Because as you and I both know, we've got to charge good money in order for people to be able to receive the profound energy that moves through us. We just have to. And a lot of people fight that for a long time, but it's so important to value the power that channels through a channel by making sure that people are invested in it. And so that's business. And so, and I love the geeking out about business stuff and finding ways that channels can do business even now that doesn't make them queasy. That's like my favorite. So quiz funnels where you have a really fun quiz that gets people attention and shows them your, your unique way of bridging the world's and engages in this automatic, profound, deep conversation that changes their lives without you even kind of being there. Ah, I love those um, to create like a steady stream of incoming perfect fit clients. I love speaking like this and helping people learn how to speak with their words, but also with their transmission, which comes pretty naturally to you, to me, like but some folks like need reminders and some structures and I have templates and structures and ways to show them like, here's how you, yes, here's how you deliver your message such that your perfect clients want to hire you. Right. And here's how you do that while also emanating your power. So they don't have question. They know, oh, I need to work with this person. You know, this is my mentor. This is my next step. And it's unquestioned. Oh God, that logic stuff in the beginning part of your life really sets you up for the structure in, in your work, in your field. I know, right? I'm so happy about that now. I know, right? God is oh. Can we talk a little bit about money? Because I think it's really important and I'm noticing it with the women that come to me that are afraid mm-hmm. or they feel like, mm-hmm. well, they won't pay that or I'm not having clients. So can we talk about money? Yeah. Because I think it's an important thing we, we don't talk about often as a yes let's talk about money (laughs) Money. Money. let's talk about money for a minute first of all there's this big patriarchal suppressing lie about how spirit work should never be paid for what a convenient lie really what does that do what an old story and um well it shuts us up right it shuts up the channels it keeps most the mostly women who are doing creative magical work from surviving by doing that magical work. And it literally devalues the most important transformative agents we have as humans. Well done, patriarchy. So if you find yourself buying into that hoo-ha, question it at the very least. And you know, I'm 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 adopted by an indigenous uh, spirit woman, Maria Yesbrew, who grew up in the White Mountains Reservation in Arizona and was trained by her great grandfather in their native ways and ceremonies. And I've been doing ceremony and work with her for over 20 years now. And it was really, it's always been important to me not to steal, co-opt traditions that belong to people, especially people that we've, you know, performed genocide on as a nation. Um, And she's the one who at first really questioned that. She said, well, first of all, Melissa, I'm not used to working with a lot of money, making a lot of money because I grew up in a very simple way. And we didn't look at wealth that way. Like wealth wasn't about money. Wealth was about having plenty to eat and fresh air to breathe and plenty of water. That was wealth. And I still, I think that's real wealth, honestly, and love, you know, but she said, but those people who say that that the holy ones are never paid, they, they've they never lived that way. Because she said, my grandfather, when he would do healings for people, when he would do ceremonies for people, it was a natural thing for them to, to reward and thank him highly with animals and food and furs and stuff that we needed at that time to live a more luxurious lifestyle. And she's like, when we lived a more luxurious lifestyle, quite frankly, because my grandfather was always helping people channeling through these high value things. 
So don't think that we didn't get quote unquote paid, that somehow this idea of equal exchange for sacred work is something new. Of course, it was more of a bartering economy at that time, but she's like, you don't have that now. What you have is money. <laughs> Y'all don't trade animals anymore. Now there's money. And so I just wanted to put that out there because that changed my perception of this should. Yeah. We don't charge for sacred work. Now, on the other hand, what did spirit tell me once that really stuck with me was um, no one can own what spirit only can give. No one can own what spirit only can give. So therefore, what that says to me is, I'm not charging for God. I don't have the only faucet to God. Everybody has access to God. Right. But the way that I channel, the way that I channel is worth a lot of money because it has a lot of effects. And so this is what I want to talk about right here, like this, this level of where, where it comes to making this decision of, of that, that charge of that fee. Yes. This is something that I believe most women, and I don't think it's men, I think it's women in particular, yeah. get really stuck on that amount and they aren't going to, because again, like maybe it, it's, it's the old storyline or maybe it's their own value of uh coming from here instead of allowing it to come through spirit so i wanted to mm. into that like as you became more yeah. sacred attuned to who you are as a soul mm -hmm. it's not about the number value right it's more about the god value it's more what god is showing you of like here's Here's what needs to move through you in in the way of energy and here's the number in which go ahead i'll let you go I'll, I'll... yeah i like that well you're you're coming at it from the god side of like god helping to inform like hey yeah. what i'm about to deliver is a really big package and so put a big number on it you know and i've and i've felt that guidance before i've also noticed that spirit guides are really crappy of putting prices on things because well, yeah, they don't do you're money giving, when you're giving your power away well and they don't do money they don't do they're not physical so they don't really get it you know so they're like you should charge 88 cents for this and they're thinking about 88 being this you know immeasurable number but 88 cents is nothing and they don't get it sometimes so it depends on your guides it depends on your system um but what i like to say is prices are based on promises Promises of what? Promises of results. I don't know about anybody else here, but I pay for results. Right. So if I know that when I come to you, I'm going to, you know, talk to my mom and finally get clear on this one thing that's been keeping me up at night, what's that worth to me? Right. Holy crap you know, thousands and thousands of dollars, right? Otherwise I suffer with it for the rest of my life. Well, that's not right that you should be charging thousands. Really? Like, but you're delivering the results. So this is where my pragmatic lawyer self kind of gets uppity. I'm like, are you kidding me? Nobody gave me a hard time for charging 250 bucks an hour as a lawyer. And some of that time I'd just be standing in line for somebody for $250 an hour. And now if I charge $2,000 an hour, for something that changes someone's life forevermore, somebody wants to get obsessed, like, come on, you know, most of my clients are repeat clients. So it's clearly, we charge, we should be charging money for results, like in any other business, that, honestly. You said that, I feel like that, and I, and I think that's what God was showing me. It's like, you know, detach from, detach from it being such a physical thing as if mm. money's physical, as if it's a human uh, and has a problem with you, detach right. from it. And like you said, you're delivering a result. You're delivering love. Yeah. It's, you are imparting a wisdom that isn't available anywhere else. And you're reminding them of who they are. You're bringing them to God. You're bringing them to source. And yeah. that to me is, is, is the result. That is the, re that's, that's the result. result. And that's, the, you're right. And it is, it is, um, and can people pray themselves? Of course they can pray themselves. Can they talk to their 
dearly departed, can they talk to their souls? Of course they can, but you know what? It's kind of hard to translate. And not and so why is it that those who can translate can charge so much money, you know, for an hour? Well, guess what? Nobody's paying you or me for an hour. No one's no, no one's thinking this is for Jeannie's hour right now. I'm giving her money for an hour of like that's not it. They're giving they're exchanging value or a sacrifice in the form of money for the result they're going to get in that hour or the feeling that they want to have for the remembrance and and we can't see around our own corners here's the truth i hire people yeah, that's like you true because that's i can't true. see around my own corners absolutely yeah and of course so i invest and that's how i see it. i want a result i invest and i put love in and i don't feel it as a sacrifice i feel it as a duty for my soul to keep emerging and evolving and growing to do that type of work totally Totally. And so my, honestly, it's my straight up spirit work that people pay the most for, which is funny because people pay me $10,000 to do a VIP session where I plan out their whole sacred business based on their soul's map. Okay. And that makes sense, right? Oh, 10 grand so that I can make 10 grand every month. Okay. Makes sense. But I also have people who pay me a hundred grand to work with me for a year to do intuitive development, to walk through the nine life initiations together, to really go and do all the spirit work in upgrades that I can do, $100,000. The first time, I'm remembering this was like five years ago now, I think, the first time that I received a big wire transfer, like it was, I think it was $85,000. Somebody had paid me a hundred grand a year previously, but it was like in monthly payments, duty, duty, do. But this time she's like, well, I just want to pay the balance off for the rest of the year. And I was like, okay. And I gave her the wiring instructions. And then the email came through that said $85,000 is on the way into your bank account. And I went into this like, <laughs> and I called one of my one of my mentors, because I have several, <laughs> you know, yeah. and I'm like, oh my God, I'm freaking out right now. $85,000. What if I can't give her the results? Oh, right. Worth so painful. $85,000. What if I can't deliver, you know, because like I do every time I make, we make a, a, a wish list together, you know, when I'm working with someone at that profound level, we make a wish list with God. And we're like, okay, this is what we're doing this year. All of these miracles will happen this year with this work. And I've never had them not happen, which is really extraordinary, but uh, thanks God. We, but part of the reason why is what she said, what she said was Melissa that she's not paying you. She's not paying for you. She's paying for the expanse of energy that she is calling through you. Mm. And it's your job to stay open and let it come through for her. She's paying for this huge energy that she's now called into her life. And it comes through you. You're the conduit. You're the channel. She's not paying for Melissa. It's not about Melissa right now. And I was like, okay, right. Thank you. My job is to be of service to this energy that she's calling through me and to be its translator, its vessel. And yes, to take care of her through this process, to give her everything that my personality also has as a, as a nurturing, you know, somewhat wise person to hold her while we do this, but she's not paying for me. I mean, she is part of it, of course. And she's like, this person, if she had paid you 20 grand, could she receive the level of this list? I'm like, nope, it wouldn't seem real. It wouldn't be enough. Right. She's like, so if you have a problem making this much money, go ahead and flow it into whatever <laughs> projects and nonprofits and Things that, I mean, it basically over the last few years, I've created a retreat center on my land because, you know, the money is not about, it's not about hoarding. It's not about grasping. 
it's really about being a conduit for the energy and for the money. Right. A and big conduit. Love. And for love, like that love, con- being a love conduit. That's what the power is. That's it's, what she's, yeah, right? Different flavors of love. Day. That's all we channel. Because that's what we're devoted to. Is to be a clear channel, is to totally healing, is to keep showing up. And that's part of what your clients get as well, is your dedication to your craft, to your work, to your calling your mentor, of having those mentors. That's really why they come. That's true. If if our healers that come to us are stagnant in their work, <laughs> the work that we give them under their ass to you yeah. know, go and to start you know, being very intentional in setting the sacred work and uh, doing ceremony and whatever that looks like for their soul, right? Right. It's, it's a reminder, like, it's not, this isn't meant to be like a one and done, you're just doing a reading, you're walking away. No, that's not, not it. Right. Yeah. And you can, and we can have different price points, you know? Sure. Absolutely. My Wisdom Academy is 500 bucks a month with a private session. Like, so it's not always... You don't all, you don't have to have all your stuff be really high end expensive, but you do have to feel into which energy is coming through where and, and who, who's here, like who's here. And part of my work feels like my give back too, because I want other channel. It turns me on. I love it that other women who are channels can step up into these levels of leadership and abundance, man, I want all the wise women channels to have all the money and leadership in this world that would be amazing like so there's different yeah it's not a one and done thing like you said it's not just a one and done thing let me ask you um your favorite type of i mean you kind of already described your favorite type of client Mm -hmm. if you go a little bit more in depth if the woman comes to you what does she typically look like Oh, she usually has some kind of a professional or corporate background. Like she's a grown ass mama who's like, you live through the stuff and she's now approaching 50 or she's in her fifties or sixties. And she's landed in this no nonsense time to get to work now, like time to do what my soul came here to do. Um, And she, it's fun to help her find all those threads from her professional background, which are now going to be woven into her spirit gifts as she stands as a prophet, as an oracle, as a wise one in this world and, and enjoys more abundance and more ease than she ever did. Even when she was a big shot, you know, whatever she might've been in the past. That's like my favorite. And I've created quite a sisterhood of us in my academy. And it's so fun. I love that. I love that. Yeah. What's one fun fact, something maybe no one else knows about you, something random? Oh my gosh. Fun fact. Okay. I have goats here on my land and they kind of rule the roost around here sometimes. In fact, I have come home to find baby goats on my car, on the roof of my house, like (laughs) <laughs> my goats are are like the fool card that is constantly percolating in the background on my land. And you're, you're in San Diego still? No, I'm actually in Northern California. I'm in Nevada City, which is kind of gold rush country up here um, between Sacramento and Lake Tahoe. So I'm in the tall cedar forest and rivers and and streams. And it's beautiful up here. It's just, it's really... It's extraordinary. It's amazing to get to live in four seasons after growing up in San Diego and living most of my life in San Diego or in the Bay Area, the San Francisco Bay Area. I moved up here about six years ago now and got 20 acres and have been developing this as a sacred retreat center. Oh, I can't wait to see your sacred retreat. Yeah, it's really, it's really special. Awesome. Hmm. Well, this has been such a joy. What, Thank what you. are you working on in your in your work right now? What how can people like find you or what is like the newest offer? You know what? Um, I really want to encourage you to come and take my soul gift quiz. It's it's the easiest way to get to know me. And in just two minutes with this little seven question quiz, you learn what your deepest gift is, what your soul's gift is. 
there's five types of soul gift. And when you learn which one you are, it begins the journey of recognizing what we talked about earlier, where you go, oh, darn it. Like, oh, my life, I've been trying to be this other thing. Oh, but this is what I am. Holy mackerel. And, and then from there, I'll send you emails that with the next steps, learning what type of genius you have, what type of genius channels through you. Um, learning. I mean, there's just, it's a little sequence of things you can learn with me. And then of course, if you want to get to know me, you can just write me back one of those emails and we can talk more about what's going on for you. But yeah, soulgiftquiz.com is where to go. Soul gift quiz, S O U L gift quiz. We'll put it, we'll put it in the show notes too. So yeah, totally. Thank you. So easy. Well, thank you so much for hanging out here on Angels Don't Lie. I really appreciate you and I'm excited for my audience to come and, and check out your work. Thank you so much. This has been so amazing. And I can tell that you have it going on and that you're channeling so much for your people, even in this field of your podcast. So I'm just delighted to get to saturate myself here and to get to know you. It's been so wonderful. Well, thank you so much. Alrighty, my friend, that was amazing, correct? I mean, Melissa's a lot of fun. We had a great conversation both on air and off air. So I just wanted to remind you that wherever you are in your journey of healing, you're safe. You're so okay with everything that's going on around you, even if you feel like you aren't equipped to deal with it. I want to remind you that you are equipped, that God has your back and you might just need a little support. And that's okay. We're not meant to do life on our own. Just like as you heard with Melissa and I chatting, we shared about our personal journeys and leaning into asking and receiving the help from other people from outside sources. So if you're feeling like you could use that support, please feel free to reach out and find out about my openings for medium readings and the events that we have going on. We'll put the information in the show notes, but you can always head on over to my website, geniestreet.com, and you'll find all the information right there. You can even send me a personal email and I will respond. It's genie at geniestreet.com. I hope you have a really blessed and beautiful day and remember that you are loved unconditionally. God bless and I'll see you in the next episode.